Hello everyone and thank you very much Mrs. Uh, Verheyen and members of the parliament and colleagues for, for the invitation uh, and, and to the speakers for the very interesting uh, presentations with a wide range of uh, views uh, indeed. There is no doubt that we have a very exciting times ahead, at least for those that are following IPR, IPR discussion. Uh, let's make a funny note. Um, so in the it would be good to use the microphone. Yes, in the maybe it's, it's portable. Is it not so much. It's like like fix here, you know. <laughs> I have to take the whole thing, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jokes aside, it is the 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 first time I think in the history of copyright law that we have a proposal that is for consumers. So the main interested parties of this proposal are consumers have been written thinking about consumers. And that's, that's proof that copyright is not only about authors, right holders, and distributors. Copyright is also about uh, the fans and the audience. Uh, that fans that, and consumers that feel frustrated when they are not able to access the subscriptions that they have bought in a, when traveling in another country, or even where they cannot access contents that are not available in their own countries. And this is, of course, related to the two sides of the, of the debate, on one side, the portability, but on the other side, the question of cross-border access. And uh, we, we heard before that, for example, we consider this is a niche problem and there is not such a big demand for cross-border access. So BEUC is a network of 41 consumer associations covering all member states. And when we discuss with our members this, this problem and how much we should get in, involved. We have almost everybody, say, but all the, the, the consumer associations that, that work on, this, on, this, on these issues that found that cross-border access is a problem. It's a problem from the point of view of availability, but it's also a problem from the point of view on competition, because you have national silos, you have national providers, but then you don't have an incentive for these providers to improve their services if their fears that their consumers might go and look for offers in other countries. If we think, for example, about the um, uh, TV markets, uh, the, the, t sorry, um, the pay TV market, in the uh, consumer market scoreboard, which is this evaluation of different consumer markets that, that the commission um, carry out every, every year, one of the worst performing markets in many countries is the pay, is the pay TV market. Our Danish member, for example, it was mentioned Denmark. In Denmark, that is, according to the Consumer Market School Board, one of the worst performing markets, our member, they did kind of a, a survey among consumers. 11,000 subscribers, they signed up to a collective complaint about the quality of the packages. What would happen if those consumers would be able to get a subscription from a neighboring country or from, a, from the UK or for whatever they, they, they want to access it. That will create pressure on the local providers to improve the services. They want to retain their customers, and fair enough. But to do so, they have, they have to be an incentive to develop offers that meet better the expectations of consumers. And competition plays that fundamental role. But this on the cross-border access, and I didn't want to really to get into this. The, the event was about portability. So coming back to the, to the portability uh, proposal, and I personally think in BEUC, we, we, we consider that this proposal provides for a very good basis to start the legislative process. And this is because the proposal recognizes that consumers are not homogeneous. Consumers have different uh, needs and, 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 and portability expectations. You might be traveling for holidays on Erasmus or working temporarily in another member state, and this is more than 30 days. And nevertheless, you would like to be able to access the services that you have subscribed, you know, like at home, like you will do in your home country. Now what we, the ball is basically on the parliament side, on the member state side, so the question is you know, how they will go ahead with the proposal that is on the table, that which I said is a, is a good basis. And it's very important that the concept of full portability underlining the proposal is maintained. And we ask the parliament and the member states to do so. And in this regard, it's important to ensure that we don't have a time limit 
for uh, online subscriptions where consumers are, 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 are abroad, that they are proportionate and reasonable verification mechanisms, and that the mandatory nature of the portability right cannot be undermined under, uh, by, by, contractual, by contractual measures. If we manage to achieve these guiding principles in the final regulation, I think will be a success from a consumer uh, point of view. So just to, to close, you know, and, and I think I'm speaking more than <laughs> some of the speakers, so <laughs> really sorry, sorry for that. Uh, it is true this, por this proposal is about portability and should remain as a portability proposal but this should be the first step of something that will wider audiences for the producers and, and, and the, content, uh, the, the content owners, but at the same time will allow consumers to decide from which provider they want to ask content, access content, irrespective of the country where it's provided. Thank you. Thank you.